Hey everyone, welcome back to Science in 10. So before we can get into the details about the different types of rocks, we need to discuss what rocks are actually made of. Minerals. Minerals are the basic building block of rocks. Think of them as the Legos of geology, with each different Lego piece having its own set of properties, size, color, shape, etc. And you can combine lots of Lego pieces together to form something new. Minerals work in a very similar fashion. Each different mineral has its own set of physical and chemical properties, and aggregates of minerals form rocks. But what exactly defines a mineral? And what are the various properties of minerals we can use to describe and identify them? Let's check that out. In order for a substance to be classified as a mineral, it must satisfy all of the five following criteria. One, it must be naturally occurring. Two, it has to be a solid. Three, it has to be inorganic. Four, it needs to have a defined chemical formula or set chemical composition. And five, it needs to have a set internal structure to how the atoms forming the mineral are arranged. As an example, let's consider pyrite, also known as fool's gold. Pyrite is a mineral. It's most definitely naturally occurring, solid, and inorganic. Pyrite also has a set chemical composition. It is an iron sulfide with the formula FeS2, one iron atom and two sulfur atoms. And these iron and sulfur atoms are arranged into a cubic structure at the atomic level. So there are somewhere around 4,000 unique minerals on Earth, with some definitely more common than others. Since many minerals can often look similar at first glance, we use various physical or chemical properties of minerals to identify them. Here are 10 common mineral properties and how to find them. First up is the initial thing you might observe about a mineral. It's color. Look at this collection of minerals of all different colors. Oh wait, all these samples are the exact same mineral. Okay, so it turns out that color might not be the best indicator of what a certain mineral is. All of these samples are of quartz, and quartz is one of those minerals that comes in many, many, many different colors. Though, for some minerals, color can be a diagnostic property. For example, olivine is usually the same pale green color, potassium feldspar is usually pinkish, and azurite is always a brilliant blue. Since color isn't the best way to identify minerals, we'll have to use other properties. For example, how does light react with a mineral? Transparent minerals allow light to completely pass through. Translucent minerals allow some, but not all light to pass through. And opaque minerals don't allow any light to pass through them. How does light reflect off a mineral surface? Is the luster shiny and metallic? Vitreous or glassy? Or dull and earthy? Another property is crystal habit or form, the tendency for minerals to grow into characteristic shapes or display sets of symmetrical faces. Often, these shapes are determined by the atomic structure of a mineral. Common forms and habits include cubic, prismatic, bladed, botryoidal, fibrous, and tabular. This next property is easily confused with form or habit, so we'll spend a little bit of time on this one. If the mineral is broken, does it cleave into geometrically similar pieces, or does it fracture into smaller bits that aren't geometrically similar? Cleavage is the property of a mineral to break along geometric weak planes within the crystal's atomic structure. Minerals with well-defined cleavage will often have planes with similar orientation repeated throughout a structure of a hand sample. Also, if you were to tap a mineral with well-defined cleavage with a hammer, it will break into smaller pieces that are almost geometrically identical. Minerals with cleavage will generally have one to three defined cleavage planes. With multiple cleavage planes, these can all be perpendicular to each other or not perpendicular. Here are some examples. Micas have one cleavage plane. Feldspars have two cleavage planes at 90 degrees to one another. Hornblende has two cleavage planes that are not perpendicular. Halite has three cleavage planes all at 90 degrees to each other. And calcite has three cleavage planes with none of them being perpendicular to the others. If a mineral does not have cleavage, it has fracture. Minerals with fracture will break into smaller pieces that are not geometrically similar. 
An easy way to differentiate between fracture and a cleavage plane in a mineral is the smoothness or shininess of a surface. Fractures can be dull and irregular, and cleavage planes will be smooth and shiny. It's important to point out that minerals with cleavage can also fracture, but minerals without cleavage will always fracture. Yet another mineral property is hardness, a qualitative measurement of what object or mineral scratches another. Hardness is measured with the Mohs hardness scale, with harder substances or minerals, or ones that resist scratching, having higher values and minerals that are easily scratched low values on this scale. To test for the hardness of a mineral, try to scratch the mineral with an item of known hardness. Harder objects will scratch less hard ones. For example, your fingernail has a hardness of about 2.5 and the mineral gypsum a hardness of 2. So your fingernail will scratch the gypsum. Another example, quartz has a hardness of 7 and a glass plate a hardness of 5.5 to 6. So quartz scratches the glass. Mineral streak is the color a mineral takes in powdered form when scratched across a white ceramic plate. Some minerals with a high iron content are also magnetic. Not that I can always recommend this one, but some minerals have a specific taste, halite in particular. And one final property, certain minerals that contain calcium carbonate will react with mild acids, mild hydrochloric acid or acetic acid, otherwise known as vinegar. So, there we go, 10 common mineral properties. Next up, by what processes do minerals form rocks? Could it be considered a cycle of sorts? We'll see you then.